This is Kenneth Vigu. This is our very first annual Christmas episode, and next to Halloween, I am a junkie for the holidays. This is episode 10, the halfway point of our season, and aside from this festive cheer episode, I can tell you that things will escalate very quickly in Appalachia for our heroes and villains from here on out. I wanted to wish all 38,000 of you the happiest of holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad, and a very good Festivus. Thank you for supporting the show this past year, and may the turning of the calendar be kind to you and yours. And now, the tree is lit, the fireplace is crackling. Here, a special Christmas gift from us to you. Unwrap it and peek inside. What's this? A snow globe? Of Santa's castle? Give it a shake. Now don't panic. We're traveling back through the swirling flakes of Christmas ash and time to last Christmas in Appalachia. But remember, this post-apocalyptic Christmas podcast contains some festive foul language, Krampus-like humor, and depictions of well-warranted Yuletide violence. You've been warned. Proceed through the garishly decorated vault door at your own risk. The eggnog is to the left. Once long ago, or so it is said, way up far in the north lived a man, jolly and red, known as Santa Claus to some, Santa Claus to some others. This father of Christmas would bring presents to all. He'd do so undercover. Yes, he'd bring presents to all of the children far and wide on this strange little world. For centuries past, Millennia too, he landed his great sleigh and slid down the flue. Beneath twinkling evergreens festooned with much cheer, he would deposit the presents. <laughs> yes, he would every year. He'd enjoy a cookie or two, left by children tall and small, and wash it down with some milk. <laughs> or a brandy, I recall. Laying a finger upside or inside of his nose, whoosh, up the chimney he rose. This is horrendous prose. As the 20th century ended and the 21st did begin, a dark pall on the world, a warmongering cloud around it curled. On one Saturday morn, no one is quite clear why, flashes rose east to west. Nations did cry. Cry out did they all in nuclear horror, and then a silence as complete as it was awful. A world frozen in time, always October, never Christmas, clocks that ceased turning over. Still some survived though they didn't quite thrive. In a castle far up north, with no more ice present, was that man dressed in red, still omnipresent. That beacon of Christmas, that father to all, still kept on breathing, still kept on seeking, a light in the dark. Hope for mankind, or mankind if you prefer, the years worn on, the light didn't occur. The year of our Lord is now 2102. This shit rhyming, I feel, may make me cuckoo. Let us descend through the dark to one flickering window, where Santa sits still, 
slid back on a pillow. Christmas Eve. <laughs> Merry fucking Christmas, everyone who's still alive. 25 years. 25 years of despair and darkness. No more children. No more light. <laughs> Krampus and his servants won. Mankind gave in to hate. Good job, everyone. What? I excuse me, Santa. Can we talk to you a minute? I said I wanted to be alone, Jingle. Excuse me, Jingle? Um, Santa, it'll just take a minute. Oh, oh, very well, Jangle. Come in, come in. How many of those rum-spiked hot cocos have you had? Mm. Oh, I stopped counting after twenty. Santa, a bunch of us were talking. And we... we don't know what we're supposed to do anymore. We haven't made toys in decades. We know it's been hard. First the Great War, then the pole ice flash melting, the flooding of the warehouse, radiation taking out half of us, another quarter of us became feral monstrosities that you had to deal with during the Christmas purge of 2096. But we've seen war before. We've seen the worst in humanity. And always, always you never stop believing, never stop reaching out. Once a year, the mere mention of you would make people stop and see others with love and generosity. Give a little more. Love um, more and just be... A little more. It's been years of you locked up in here. The world is still turning. Oh, it's still turning all right. The capital wasteland, the London horrors, the burning sands of the Holy Land. <laughs> Oh, 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 remember the naughty list? It used to be a fucking list made of paper. We had to switch to a computer, but just two months after the Great War, it exploded. Exploded! <laughs> it couldn't calculate naughtiness that quickly. <laughs> CEOs and Wall Street power brokers became raiders and cannibals. <laughs> but you haven't even flown down there in years. Well, gee, Jingle, I've been shot at by raiders who attempted to kill an immortal Yuletide being. And then realizing they couldn't, they tranquilized me and spent three hours taking turns teabagging me. <laughs> and on another occasion, I spent three hours running in circles trying to get back to the sled being chased by death claws outside Las Vegas. <laughs> but Santa... And then the worst. I was in Charleston, West Virginia. For the first time in so many years, an entire city was coming together to celebrate Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Just as I finished dropping off presents, just when I was beginning to feel the flicker of spirit again, an explosion, then screams, death. A city drowning and lights flickering out for good. I am done with Christmas. <laughs> you can't just give up. What do you want from me? I sent those Santatrons down there you guys threw together to help those survivors. What did they do? They took the stuff the Santatrons scavenged for them, scrapped them, bulked them with melted plastic, and sold them to other survivors to make a profit. 
<laughs> what the actual fuck? That's okay, they were supposed to give the owners presents every now and then. I fixed them so they are more likely to see a unicorn. Corn holding a snallygaster. Then get a present now. <laughs> But you can make a difference. You can show people out there that they don't have to be the worst of themselves. And, well... Look, we need to talk about your new wife. She's Mrs. Claus to you. Santa, Mrs. Claus died the first day of the Great War. This elf isn't good for you. We don't even know where she came from. But I've seen her do things to reindeer with candy canes that's not very festive. <laughs> Don't you mean rad deer? Yeah, <laughs> all those noses glow now. It's festive as fuck. Hey, muffin! I'm ready to candy your cane. Oh Jesus! Here she comes. Hey, Jingle. Hey, Jangle! It's me, Piss Flyx. Oh my god, seriously? You do want to stick around? Santa and I are going to snort tinsel and do a miracle on 69th Street! Yeah, no. We're good. You two need to lighten up! It's a low tide up in here, and my clams are on the beach! Where are you from, anyway? I'm from Baja, California! My daddy was Jack Frost. He was at the Easter Bunny's bachelor party when he got married to that holy Wild Borealis. Well, one magic night, he met my mom, Percy the Puny Bomb Santa, and five months later, I had popped. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Well, anyway, I always had a crush on Chris Kringle here. So last Christmas, when he was soaking around this horror of a planet, I stood on my head in the chimney, and he slid right down. Let me tell you, it was love and first bang. This would make for a horrifying holiday special. Shut up, Jangle. Look, um, Miss Pissflaps, Claws, would you mind if we chatted with Santa for a few minutes? We're almost done. Sure, no problem. I'm gonna go feed the horses! Hey, horses! It's me, Piss Flaps! What a hot piece of ass! <laughs> Santa, listen. All we are asking is just look out there. Look, one more time. Just one more time. There's still good in the world. People who care. People who keep the light of Christmas alive. You just have to look for it. Any fire can start from the tiniest spark. Please. Please, Santa. Oh, all right. Give me the enchanted snowball off the shelf. The last gift of the winter warlock before he melted for good. I miss that old crazy bastard. <laughs> Yay! Here you go, Santa! Now let's see. Where should we start? What about there? Where is that? Uh, what used to be West Virginia. Appalachia now. States have no meaning anymore. Let's look. Oh, wait. A picture is forming. It's... Oh, no. No. Nope. Mm -mm. Who is it? I know a servant of Krampus when I see one. It's just a big guy and a little girl. I is that a doll? A talking Ella? We used to make those here. Until we had some issues with them anyway. Just give it a chance, Santa. There's, there's a flicker of love here. But it's a funny color. Let's move in closer so we can hear what they're saying. Little bit. Hey, come in for a second. I, I use some of your crayons to draw up the plans for Vault 69 Gym. Huh? Oh, that's nice. Well, what's wrong? Don't you like it? It's okay. Ellen and I are tired. Good night. Good night? 
you haven't even eaten your dinner yet. Uh, I figured for dessert we'd head down to the White Spring train station and use a harpoon gun to trap people inside. Uh, what's going on? It's just... Uh, Ellen and I get sad this time of year. What time of year? It's almost Christmas. Christmas? Oh, shit. No calendar out here. And this fist cuff doesn't fucking work right. I totally forgot. But what's wrong with Christmas? Well, we used to get prezzies a long time ago, but not anymore. Santa stopped visiting the Christmas Ella and I met. Santa's a big red bitch. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. He never bought me anything either. Well, that's okay, though. Uh, even back in the vault, we used to have a big baller party with drinking and sex in the broom closet. <laughs> I remember one Christmas, I convinced Pat's to wear nothing but a... But everyone else got presents. Back when it was normal, Veronica next door got a little atomic oven to make cupcakes, and Timmy down the street got a brand new bicycle. Before they got blown up, Mommy and Daddy only got me dumb presents, dresses and underwear. Santa brings you what you really want. What you want way down inside. He knows, but he only visits the good kids. Let's write a letter to Krumpus. He'll beat the plebes to death with fallen logs. <laughs> am, am I bad? What? I, I mean... Look, Susie, things aren't that simple. Um, I, look, I, I was just fooling about forgetting Christmas. <laughs> I'm surprised you went to dinner, but fuck it. Grab your coat. Um, I have a surprise for you. A surprise? You bet. I figured we'd start on the gym after New Year. But for Christmas, we'd get out of this shitty shack. Up on the hill over there where those fancy pants mansions are, some losers built festive camps all decorated with lights. You can pick out any one you want. We're going to spend Christmas there. You mean it? Sure, Santa's balls jingle. We're going to deck out a tree, sing some songs, and have a proper Christmas. Let's murder the homeowners. Oh boy, oh boy, let's go, Ella. Oh great, now that's what Christmas is all about. Chad Johnson, Susie Smith, and a servant of Krampus are going to break into someone's home, murder them, and move right in for Christmas. <laughs> oh, look, Jingle, Jangle, this is a waste of time. What's that over there, to the north? It looks like a girl, lying in the road. Is she okay? Oh, let's see. Is this on? Stupid flashlight, come on, come on! <sighs> Christmas Eve, instead of being in a warm vault, I'm wandering around in the dark with one diluted stim pack and no water. Way to win, Betsy! Stuck in some nightmare store purgatory for who knows how long after that little bitch poisoned me with lemonade. Oh, I'm gonna get her. Help! Won't someone help me? Who is that? Please. Some goddamn dog tore my leg up. I'm crippled. Please. Amada? Is that you? Betsy? Betsy Wilson? Oh, am I glad to see you. What happened to you? You look terrible. What are you wearing? My vault suit was destroyed. So I had to patch together this leather and metal armor to protect myself out here. It's been terrible. I guess. I could tell you a story or two. Can... Can you help me? Do you have a stim pack? It took my last one to fend off that rabid canine. I... I think it had some kind of disease that amplified its aggressive tendencies. Oh, sure. This is my last one. But if we team up, we can probably scav around to find some more supplies. Here, let me- No, no. I've got it. I'll do it myself. I received phlebotomy training from vault Tech. Um, okay, I guess. Here you go. Thank you, Betsy. This is a modified plasma pistol. Back up a bit, Betsy. Nice and slow. What? 
What is this? I don't understand. I'm sorry about this, but things aren't what we thought they'd be out here. And not too long ago, I went on an incredibly long and tedious mission for a raider named Rose. She taught me one thing. Self-reliance and survival. At all costs. You bitch. You weren't even hurt, were you? No. A doctor up torn flesh with mole rat entrails and viscera. The effect is pretty believable, don't you think? Go fuck yourself, Amada. Yeah, no. All right, I'm going to need you to turn out your pockets into this paper bag here. Why don't you make me? <sighs> they never listen. Now I have to sift through this goo for junk. Merry Christmas, Amada. Nice. The old hurt people in the middle of the road ruse. Ah, Mata, what happened to you? Jangle, pull out an old copy of the nice list there. Let's try and find some of those good kids. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. This is a fool's errand. Oh, what about her? Mm, dead. That one? Turned into a super mutant who does insane radio broadcasts when she's not eating people. <laughs> what about this one? Oh, Jake. Well, same neighborhood. Might as well see what he's up to. Is this thing on? Yeah, hey, future me. Guess who's spending Christmas Eve ridiculously trying to find a Christmas tree with needles still on it and not emitting lethal doses of rats? This guy. I was gonna skip it. I was gonna stay in, play some Red Menace on my pit boy, and take a Russian roulette sip from my holiday punch bowl to see if I'm gonna wake up some weird place or perhaps become so heavy I break the sound barrier jumping from the New River Gorge Bridge. But then I remembered how important the holidays used to be for Grant. We'd always go overboard decorating our little home back in Vault 76. We weren't really allowed to bring in any personal effects when they first opened the vault, but she smuggled in some of our family heirloom Christmas ornaments from the old country with her. The overseer would have the staff pass out those glittery pipe cleaner Christmas trees, and on Christmas Eve, as we'd tuck into eggnog and grand fruitcake, She'd delicately take those ornaments out of the tissue paper and we'd hang them one by one on the tree as she told us stories. Legends and superstitions that her grand had told her. Out here, alone, as I was planning on just skipping the night, I could feel her yelling at me. You know, telling me, stop feeling sorry for myself. Jacob, the first thing to do when you're feeling sorry for yourself is to stop crying and sing a new song. So instead of sad violins in my head, here I am, with these dumb felt antlers on my head and getting my festive on. Ah, uh, here we go. This tree is perfect. Merry Christmas, Gran. Shit! Shit! Hey! Who there? Punch make dead! Smell puny human! Hmm. What happened to tree? Hmm. You! Human and bush! You come out, or punch throw boom boom nades and make you paste! Hold up! Hold, hold up! Look! I'm not looking for any trouble. You right size? Bunch bring you back to Claw. We make you meal. What? No, no, I assure you, I don't taste very good. I smoke and I eat a lot of spoiled meat. My insides smell like an ashy. No problem for Bunch. Bunch boil you in broth with fire cap and mushroom. Good stew. Wait, why you got horns? Horns? What? Oh. 
Oh, the, these are um, antlers. Antlers? No, no, antlers. But humans no have antlers? You cutting tree? You reindeer? Yeah, okay, I'm a reindeer. Oh, punch remember Santa? He loved Santa. Used to bring Punch toy when he was puny human. Punch missed Santa. Yeah, he uh he missed you too. He has these rules and he can only give gifts to uh, puny humans. Oh. But uh, I tell you what, I need to get back to the North Pole with this tree. He has uh, give some uh, orphan kids with no legs for Christmas. So I'm just gonna go, okay? Yes, you go! Leave Punch! Punch help with tree! Gee, that's great! Well, I'll be seeing ya! Hey! What are you doing out here, anyway? Punch are looking for food! For big Christmas meal for clan! Claw leader send Punch out! Tell Punch, come back with meal, or don't come back. Claw hole in ass. An asshole? <laughs> yeah, he sure sounds it. Punch always have to patrol. Punch want to cook, make meals, make brew. But Claw say no. Well, the first thing you do when you're feeling sorry for yourself is sing a new song. Jingle balls, jingle balls, beauty, humans run away. No, no, not like that. It's a metaphor. Punch no pay to mount. Punch not desperate. No, not a whore. It means... Well, it means if you're not happy being told what to do, why don't you stand up to him? But Claw Legendary has three stars put on chest. He in charge. Stars that can be put on can be taken off. Hmm. Punch tell Claw he a Christmas bitch. Punch cook whatever Punch want. Maybe soup and salad. There you go. Look, I need get I need to get back to my camp. I mean, back to Santa. But uh, since Santa won't be visiting you tonight because you're, you know, eight foot tall and green, let me give you something as one of his official reindeer. Uh, here you go. Oh, nice cooking pot. Yeah, you can cook stuff in it and uh, wear it for the hell of it. Punch like reindeer. Merry Christmas. Yeah, and a Merry Christmas to you. See, I told you. Right. Now, that was a nice gesture, but looking back here, it looks like Jake is a cannibal and has slaughtered and eaten nine people. Ho, ho. Oh, well, still, did you see what happened there? He could have left that big green guy, but instead he sensed he was sad and tried to help. I supposed if you want to look at it that way, in some sort of warped elf logic, but he's still a murderer despite carrying on Christmas traditions and impersonating one of my reindeer. Hang on! Look at that light to the west! What is that? Well, that's an awful lot of Christmas lights. And Christmas lights in Point Pleasant. Look, there. Who's that on the road, outside the city? Hmm. That looks like Simon. Simon Rex. He was always a good boy, but he's not looking so good now. Let's move closer. Come on, come on, you piece of shit. Stupid holotapes. I'm cold, I'm out of water and food, and now I can't find a blank holotape to record on. Come on, guys. Not this one. What's this one? This might be blank. The Vault. 307 days to reclamation. Christmas. Before Mom was eaten by the rad roaches, Christmas was her favorite time of year. I remember when she was teaching, she'd 
dim the lights and we'd sit in a circle, lit only with the glow of our pit boys, alternating in colors of red and green light, and she'd tell us stories of holidays before the Great War, of super duper marts festooned with animated Santa Clauses and snowmen with lasers to terminate shoplifters, of aisles upon aisles of the latest toys, rideable giddy up buttercups and automated dolly prams, uranium-infused board games from Hazard Pro, and gallons and gallons of eggnog. Trees and houses up and down Main Street would be decked out in their finery, and snow, real snow, not ash, would cover the ground and festoon the houses overnight. When she was done, we'd sing our favorite carols and do a Yankee swap. We'd gather our unnamed, untagged presents under the tree and each grab a number out of the pint-sized slasher mask. Her Mr. Handy would call out numbers, and one by one we'd pick a random gift and open it for all to see, and either keep it or pass it on. We'd never know who brought which present, but Jake and Amato would somehow always get something good. This year, we repeated the ritual, despite being probably too old for it. Jake got an actual useful water filter that he can use out there. Amada received a 10 millimeter handgun and a pair of sunglasses. This year, not to be outdone, I picked the largest box under the tree. Perhaps too late, I heard Chad snickering in the back of the room. Tearing off the wrapping paper, I opened the cardboard box and found another cardboard box inside. It it so continued eight more times until finally I found a single shotgun shell casing with a note stuffed inside that simply read, Ask Chad what kind of shot goes in here. Stupidly I did, and he swiftly socked me right in the nuts, yelling nut shot. I collapsed in pain and vomited all over my Christmas sweater. I really, really can't stand him, but the overseer says when we emerge, we must be the best we can be. So I shall take that high road and ignore him. We ended the night with a party in the main foyer. And perhaps, having one too many Nuka-Cola quantums, I retired to bed, comfortable, warm, and glowing with my own irradiated inner light. It doesn't get much better than this. Oh, go fuck yourself, optimistic Simon. Begin recording. One year later, Appalachia, day 62, Christmas Eve, 30 degrees Fahrenheit, sleet, and I'd like to turn West Virginia to glass. Yesterday, I was murdered and mysteriously resurrected yet again. As I journeyed back to camp, I was incessantly attacked by some kind of glowing penis with teeth creature that continuously spit some noxious bile on me. Respite was only found on the outskirts of Grafton. As I approached the train station to seek out essential aid from a robot vendor, mole rats began eating at my feet again. I made short work of them and realized one of them was a female. Inspired, I extracted eight ounces of milk and mixed what was left of it with my old possum beer to make the nearest approximation of eggnog I could summon in this hellscape. As one can imagine it, it gave me explosive, festive diarrhea paired with projectile vomiting. Still no sign of Jake, Amato, or anyone really, but I spotted on my Pip-Boy a cluster of dwellers headed to Point Pleasant, so I decided to see what's up. Heading into the city now, but I'm fresh out of supplies. Fingers crossed for a Christmas miracle. Hurry up, Dad. Hurry up. All right. All right. Calm down. Sanitron will still be there. Hey. Hey. Hey, excuse me. What's going on in Point Pleasant? Don't you know? It's the Christmas Fantasy Light Show. We organize it every year. Except the year everything went to sheer. That's how mom you swore. You wanna see Santa Tron or not? Sorry, sir. It's always been a big deal. We usually hike in from all over Appalachia. The knots at the bus stop were programmed to set up the event the year of the Great War. And they've been doing it ever since. Please tell me there's food. Food, drinks, music, all kinds of stuff. Come on, Dad. The line is going to be huge. All right. 
All right. See you later, soon. Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas! Complimentary mulled wine, courtesy of the Mothman Museum. Tonight only! Oh my god. I- I'll take one of those. <laughs> Whoa there, master! You'll be whistling into the river at that pace! Oh damn, that is so, so good. C- can I have another? Help yourself, sir. It's free. Thank you. Hot cider donuts here. Karen? Oh, hey, Simon. Merry Christmas. And to you, those smell amazing. Yeah, so I found a recipe in Helvetia that I couldn't wait to try, and they've been selling like hotcakes. I'll take two. Twenty caps, please. Done. Mmm. Oh, that's perfect. They're warm and... Mm. Hey, how did you get mixed up into this whole thing? A Mr. Handy was recruiting staff to work the event. They needed food vendors, so here I am. There's a few of the old gang around here somewhere. What? Jake and Amada? No, I've seen Moose. He stole a bunch of donuts, so they had to call security, and now they're making him work off what he ate as an elf. You should see him. It's hilarious. I'll catch up with you guys later. Oh, oh, oh. Well, my helper, elf, who is next in line to see Santa? Ho, ho, ho. These green tights are crushing my nuts, dude. They're so tight, I think I can taste blood. Ho, ho, ho. When you are a naughty elf who steals, you have to pay the piper. Ho, ho, ho. Whatever, dude. They're just some dried donuts. Well, well, well. How the big and dumb have fallen. Simon? That's a really impressively festive outfit you got there, Moose. Looks super comfy. Ho, ho, ho. Let's get our next kid up here. Oh, boy. Up you go, you little burn kid. Oh, your skin is all gross. And have you been a good little opus irradiated and mutated immortal ghoul? I sure have, Santa. I did all my chores at home and went two whole weeks without going feral. Bro, this kid smells like a barn. You are the worst elf imaginable. Well, you've been a very good ghoul this year. My helper elf here is going to take a picture and give you a special present from me. Look at the camera. Say, Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. I think I got this thing backwards. Here you go, you little weirdo. Enjoy a picture of my face. Gee, thanks. Here's your present, kid. Santa, I'm taking five to take a whiz. These tights are giving my nuts a moose knuckle. Merry Christmas, moose. Eat a dick, Simon. Oh, wow! A mounted beaver to hang on my wall! That's what I've always wanted! What kind of dumb gift is that? It's neither attractive or useful in any way. Beat it, you are ruining the holiday spirit. Merry Christmas! I'm going, I'm going. doing tonight. My name is Mary Ann Belts, and this here little instrument is called a ukulele. Oh lord, it's Mary Ann Belts. Speaking of instruments, what's the best Christmas present in the world? A broken drum. You just can't beat it. These jokes are worse than mine. Why don't you get off stage, you sad weird single woman? Oh, come on, insult bot. At this festive time of year, it's time we spread a little holiday cheer. 
If you think you can do better, let's hear a little Christmas joke from you. Challenge accepted. Here's one. Why was Santa's little helper depressed? Gee, why is that insult, bot? Because he had low elf esteem. No oh, brother. Well, from the looks of those red noses out there by the beer garden, that reminds me of another famous red nose. That would be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but I don't know that song, so jingle bells it is. Dashing through the snow In a one-horse open sleigh O'er the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells on bobtails ring Are making spirits bright Intend on securing them all. I don't know yet, Vince, but you've done enough. Enjoy your well-earned retirement. Overseer? Oh, hello, Simon. Hey, kid. How's Appalachia treating you? Well, it's been interesting so far. Have either of you seen Amada and Jake? No, I don't recall seeing any of them. Since you've all started changing your names to disguise yourselves on the map, I don't know where any of you are anymore, or what you've become. What do you mean? <laughs> Don't mind me. Just rambling. Too much spiked eggnog. Here, have a dinner ticket. I, I snagged some extra ones at the buffet at the Mothman Museum. They have quite a spread in there. Brahmin steaks and soups. And you look like you haven't eaten in a while. Yeah, we weren't exactly given ample supplies on the way out or anything. It's funny how we were all separated. Yes, hilarious. Well, I'll see you later, no doubt. Thanks for the meal ticket, Vince. No problem. Merry Christmas. And to you. Didn't take him long, did it, Vince? Merry Christmas. Bask in the lights of Christmas. A gift from our Lord. Feast. Excuse me. Do you have a ticket? Not just anyone is welcome within. The question is, are you believer? Do you speak the name of Ingrid Cold? And behold, he who flutters angrily at the ball. Um, I have a ticket? Ah, step right inside. What is this place? This is a temple, nay, a museum, to our lord, the iconic, the renowned moth that is a man, a man who is a moth. A, a moth man? Yes, not all creatures are of the land, some stalk the skies, and the boogeyman who has been seen in this town, the place of his birth is our lord, the moth man, beast, devil, angel. Lover of Warswells. Behold a timeline of his story. Foretold of the bridge collapse. Hmm. Um, saved Mary Scarberry and two friends of hers from a train, and then later ate them. What, what kind of museum is this? A festive one. Come, let us descend below. Past the men's room, a holiday buffet. Is the depths of the museum. Oh, that smells delicious. I recommend the, the puff pastry. Oh, that's cute. They're, they're in the shape of moths, but you put red and green sprinkles on them. Very traditional and not at all strange and bizarre. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Our host of the evening now emerges. Let us behold his beneficence, 
the wise Mothman, Lord of Appalachia. Behold, lights please. For behold, I bring unto you moth dust and tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people who bring me lamps. For unto Appalachia this day in the city of Point Pleasant, that which I covet, 100 watt incandescent bulbs. Right. Okay, I'm going to just make myself a plate for the road. Ooh, fried mire lurk legs. Okay, I've seen enough. This is a complete waste of time. You've got this sad sack who just murdered someone a few weeks ago for using his workbench. You've got some weirdo and a giant moth who have bastardized both the intention of Christmas and apparently holy scripture. A thieving mongoloid in an elf outfit, Marianne belts, silly robots, and a plotting overseer. The lights are nice, but there is no Christmas spirit here. It's robots with romanticized fake orgasms of holiday cheer. <laughs> What about that guy and the little girl from earlier? Chad and Susie. Hmm. Yeah, he was trying to give her a nice Christmas. Uh, okay, fine. Space them out there a little bit, sweetie. If you put all your decorations close together like this, it's not as nice. Oh, like this? That's right. What are all those? Ellen and I drew the faces of the people we took sparklies from and played with this past year. See, their faces look all silly. We put X's for eyes because we straight up murdered them. That's great. Uh, uh, I like the crayon colors you got there. This house is so cozy and nice. It's just the most perfect Christmas we've had in a long time. It really is. Shut up, plebe! Little bit. Why don't you check and see if our cocoa is ready? Yum, yum! With extra marshmallows! Look, dude. We're crashing here for tonight. And I suggest you play along. You can be a Christmas tree inside where it's warm, or a little one can take you out back and turn you into Dominic the Christmas Donkey. Blink if you get me. There. See? No problem. You'll have your place back tomorrow. Here you go! Here you go! Oh, careful! Don't spill it! Uh, put that down there for a second and plug in your lights on this dude tree. Oh, boy! This guy is festive as fuck! There. Ain't that pretty? Coco time! Want some, Ella? Are you batshit crazy? Can you spell house fire? Mmm, that's chocolatey! Tell Ella and I a Christmas story. A Christmas story, huh? Hmm. I don't know a lot of those. My daddy wasn't much for Christmas stories, but I think I remember one from school. Uh, it's by a dude called Orgasm Henry or something. The gift of the magic guy. Oh, I love magic. Yeah, see, one Christmas Eve, uh, there was this couple. Uh, a woman named Delicious and her husband, uh, ding -a young See, they weren't doing so hot because she was a stay-at-home thought and he was some kind of toothbrush salesman or something who only made 30 bucks a week. Well, she'd saved up $1.87 by searching seat cushions at the doctor's office in the laundromat and wanted to buy him a special present. The problem was, $1.87 could only buy you a gumball with inflation, but she wanted to go buy him a real special present to make up for the fact that her cooking sucked 365 days a year. See, two of them had only owned a couple of things. Dang Lang had a gold, uh, uh, watch, and Delicious made a living back in the day smoking poles down at the strip joint, and every dude paid her extra because she was a blonde bombshell back then with great hair. Well, anyway, she decided to sell her hair to some guy down the street who made female sultrons for guys with real hair and were kind of thick out back. So, 
that dude gave her $200 and she hauled ass down to the jewelry shop to buy him a chain to hang his watch on so he could strut around like a total pimp. So she went home, all short hair and stuff, and waited. Well, Jim was late and uh, when he showed up, he didn't look so great. She wished him a Merry Christmas anyway, and, and he was kind of shocked that she was going through some kind of short hair feminist face. But she explained that she did it because she loved him and wanted to buy him something great for Christmas. Well, he was kind of shocked, but he presented her a, a Christmas present. Well, she unwrapped it and he bought her some brushes, like real nice brushes, not some crap ones. Now, of course, she didn't have any hair, which was kind of a bummer. Well, she gave him his present and he unwrapped it and he was kind of like, What's up with this keychain? I sold my pocket wash to buy you these brushes. <laughs> well, they kind of looked at each other and then looked at the burnt meatloaf on the table. And then they hugged and said, well, what a great Christmas. <laughs> Isn't it magical? What happened next? That's it. But that story wasn't about anything. Well, I think it's an example of the story of the three dudes who went to see the baby Jesus and brought him some gold and a Mrs. Rash spice mix. Something about giving is more important than getting. That story was stupid. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think you should protect and care about what's yours. Like you taking a chance to help me and uh, me looking out for you. All tuckered out. You finish your cocoa? Uh-huh. Come on. Let's tuck you into bed. Can I sleep out here by the tree and fire? It's so pretty and warm. Sure. Here, scooch down. Get your little blanket here. Now, close your eyes. And maybe when you wake up, there'll be a little something for you and Ella underneath that dew tree over there. Uh, uh, um, okay. Good night. Not a little bit. I'll be in the other room. Good night, bitch. <laughs> I love you. What did you say? <laughs> I... Hmm. Merry Christmas, kid. What is that? It... It can't be. That glow. It's impossible. That's the spirit of Christmas. The magic of Christmas. A coxman jock, a homicidal little ghoul, and a servant of Krampus? That's not possible. You don't get it. Everything. Everything is different now. Civilization has collapsed in on itself. War has devastated everything, leaving every human being still breathing in a desperate struggle for survival. There is no black and white, and right and wrong is in a spectrum now. Amongst all of that, amid all of that, a little girl saved the life of someone who reached out to her. That simple gesture reached him like no other gesture ever had. He's not your typical father figure. What a frame of reference is there. They care for each other. And whether he'll ever admit it or not, he would do anything for her. If that's not love, the hope and spirit of Christmas, I don't know what is. You're right. I couldn't see it. Jingle! Jangle! Hitch up the sleigh. Wake Yukon Cornelius and his life partner, the Abominable, to clear the runway. We're making a run tonight. Christmas is back on. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, Merry Christmas, Kringle Elves. This sad old ghoulified Christmas man learned a lesson tonight. For the first time in 25 years, I'm going to be spreading cheer. And when I get home, it will be you I will be spreading. Oh, my Yuletide ovaries! <laughs> the sleigh is ready, Santa, and the presents are loaded. On Dasha, 
on Danza, on Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. Ho, 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 ho. And to all a good night. Ho, 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 ho. On that Christmas Eve, or so it is said, the jolly man in red to Appalachia sped, to a ghoul named Susie, the gift of a knife. (laughs) That was quite a doozy. And to her friend by the name of Chad, the gift of a randy cheerleader, looking for a daddy. And so he exclaimed as he flew out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all. A good night. Wait, wait, wait. So he wakes up to a cheerleader looking for a dad. Really? Santa gives out whores now. What? What is this? This this is in the script? Nothing about this episode is festive or family-oriented. Well, it's funny because it rhymes, and honestly, what else would Chad want for Christmas except the gift of Poon? That... no, no. No, 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 that's disgusting. Right, I'm out. No. And Chad is apparently a hero now. I have no idea where we're going here. Is any of this even canon? Nope. No, no, I'm out. Uh, Cody? Cody? Where'd he go? Maybe we should cut to the ending musical number. I guess. Can we get everyone in the studio A, please? Okay, gang, we're still live here, so when you're ready, cue track. <laughs>